and this is before Access Bank, it still took us weeks and we just couldn't seem to catch up with this, with this gentleman. One of the myths around Jimovia was that he, he held things very close to his chest and that um, he was a difficult man to obtain assistance from. I can tell you that that is not true. And this is the first secret I will share with you. Very shortly after we did the Access Bank thing, Access Bank at that point in time uh, was certainly uh, a very, very little ant compared to the giant that already Zenith Bank was. I received a call and it was Jimovia. And Jim said to me, young man, come to my office, I want to show you something. I went to his office. And for the next three hours, Jim Ovia proceeded to share with me the secrets of his success, the secrets of his life, and the secrets of Zenith. And to be honest, that day, as he showed me thing after thing after thing after thing, from technology to people to succession planning and everything, I said, Ai Guji, you've got to revise your plans for Access Bank. And I looked at this man as he was sharing these secrets, and I said, it's either of two things. He tells me that he wants me to be great like him. It's either he truly believes it, or he truly underestimates me. I wasn't sure. But then I'll tell you something. A few years down the road, at a very pivotal time in my life, when the journey through life could have been left, as you know it today, or right, a much more negative outcome. Jimovia again called me and did the most unexpected, most unanticipated thing and gave me a lifetime break. Thank you, Uncle Jim. So if I've taken your time, understand that I'm not sure that God would have forgiven me to stand up here just read and go back if I hadn't shared this gentleman, Mr. Jim Ovia, his life, his beliefs, his kindness, and his good heart. And so something that we both share in common is a love for health, a belief that if the private sector and the public sector collaborate, great things can happen to shine light on the darkness that is Africa's health sector. And I read from chapter 27. Bill Gates asked to meet with a, cop, with a small group of Nigerian entrepreneurs, myself included. It was as fellow philanthropists that he approached us. I was, of course, quite pleased when I was invited to take part in a discussion Bill Gates was hosting in Abuja in 2010. The meeting took place at the Hilton Hotel. Bill didn't beat around the bush. He'd asked us to the meeting, he said because he hoped we would agree to create and set up a philanthropic organization that would serve as a private health alliance focused on Nigerian health care and health issues. He also spoke very movingly about his vision of eradicating polio and other serious but preventable health conditions in Nigeria. He believed that in Nigeria, this vision could be best served by Nigerians, men or women who are local to this culture and also visible and trusted both in Nigeria and abroad, people like us. If we were amenable to doing that, Bill told us, he would commit to helping support our group personally and financially, tripling our collective donations. Few would be surprised to learn that we agreed. We would not have a public face or the name Private Sector Health Care Alliance of Nigeria for several more years. Nonetheless, we were now part of a private sector health care alliance, our founding members including Ali Kodangote, Dr. Mohamed Ali Pate, Aibuje Aig Imokwede, Shola David Bora, and myself. And as I depart from this stage, um, Jim, I know you love your children so much. My prayer is that in the way that you have touched lives and you continue to touch lives of men and women, they will find at every turn a man or woman who will touch them as you have touched me. God bless you. Thank you very much, Mr. Aguadre Um 
it is just beautiful to see people speak about the leadership of Mr. Jim Ovia and how he is not selfish with it. True success is when you are able to affect succession. And not just in your own line and in your own establishment, but in the industry. To be able to pass the baton of banking on from one generation to the next, even across organizations. Join me and appreciate Mr. Jim Ovia one more time. Phenomenal leader. I have a few more readers. I'm going to call them up very quickly. Um, this gentleman, also one of the big names in media, having founded uh, the very popular This Day magazine, a newspaper, and also the Africa-style and culture-based magazine called Arise. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me and welcome Mr. Unduka Obaigwena as he comes to speak about the book, Africa, Rise and Shine. Yeah, he is now. Please put your hands together for him. The Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, today we celebrate Jim Ovia. I will continue to applaud him. But let us also take our time to celebrate Nigeria. Nigeria made it possible for us all to thrive. Our democracy is in its 19th year and growing. Imperfect as it is, it's coming gradually of age. With our democracy, we must create opportunity. Only in Nigeria can a company come with, is it $402 million and make $8 billion in a few years. Is certainly the land of opportunity. But we must also build a Nigeria of the rule of law, of freedom, and free choice and democracy. And if we do that, our democracy will thrive, and our business and our institutions will keep thriving. Jimovia is a strategist. I believe of all the speakers here, I have known him most of my life. He comes from the minority of the minority. And he's made good. And as he say, he is world class. Let me share his words with you. In the words of Jimovia, when most people outside of Africa visualize the continent, the associations they often make are with famine and poverty, conflict and war. From the moment I, that is Jimovia, began writing this book. I've been determined to redefine this narrative and illustrate the real Africa behind the headlines. The Africa of my birth and of my life experiences is a continent of abundant human and natural resources, immense and diverse with great investment opportunities, and an economy that is primed for leap, for leap, to leapfrog. Africa's challenge may appear daunting to most, but to those with the right entrepreneurial vision, challenges always provide opportunities. Poor infrastructure, the entrepreneur sees this as a chance 
to leverage 